we can describe the efficiency of an algorithm, a program, or a programmatic operation in terms of the time it takes to do its work. These can be useful things to know, but of course the performance of a program depends on the capabilities of the computer it's running on. Big O notation tells us something else. Big O describes the way that the time taken by a program depends on the amount of data it has to work with. Big O tells us how well a program scales. We say that Big O describes the complexity of a program. With constant time complexity, no matter how big the data structure, the number of operations, and therefore the time taken, is fixed. Exactly what that time is depends, of course, on what the program is actually doing and the capabilities of the computer it's running on. The raw performance may be very good, or it may be very poor. This is not what's relevant as far as Big O is concerned. What matters is the time taken is independent of the amount of data that the program is given to work on. Constant time complexity is considered ideal. Examples include the push and pop and peak operations of a stack data structure the NQ and DQ operations of a linear or a circular queue, and inserting a node into a linked list. With linear complexity, the time taken by a program is directly proportional to the amount of data it's given to work on. This is a nice straight line when plotted on a chart. Doubling the number of data items doubles the time taken. Tripling the amount of data triples the time taken, and so on. Linear complexity is considered good, but a program that scales according to linear complexity can be unacceptably slow with very large data structures. The linear search is an obvious example of an algorithm that exhibits linear complexity. Other examples include traversing a linked list, counting the items in a list, comparing a pair of strings, in fact all kinds of algorithms that take a brute force approach to working with lists have probably got linear complexity. With quadratic complexity, the number of operations, and therefore the time taken by a program, is proportional to the square of the amount of data it starts with. Twice as much data takes four times as long to process. Three times as much data takes nine times as long to process. This is considered poor scalability. A program that scales with quadratic complexity can be unusably slow with large amounts of data. Examples include the bubble sort and the insertion sort, and traversing a two-dimensional array. Polynomial complexity is a general term for any complexity in which the time taken is proportional to the amount of data raised to the power of some constant. We'll call that constant k. If k is 2, it's known more specifically as quadratic complexity. If k is 3, it's actually cubic complexity. k can, in fact, be any number. Linear complexity is also an example of polynomial complexity, because in this case, k is 1. Any number raised to the power of 1 is itself. n raised to the power of 1 is just n. Strictly speaking, constant complexity is also polynomial, because any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. With constant complexity, k is 0. In the case of logarithmic complexity, the time taken is proportional to the base 2 logarithm of the number of items in the data structure. This means that if the amount of data doubles, the number of operations, and therefore the time taken, grows by only one unit. This is good scalability. Plotted onto a chart, we see a steep curve to begin with, but then it starts to level out. This means the impact of increasing the amount of data a program has to work with lessens when it's asked to work with very large data structures. Examples include performing a binary search on a pre-sorted list, or searching a binary tree. In fact, logarithmic complexity often typifies algorithms that take a divide-and-conquer approach. With linearithmic complexity, the time taken is proportional to the logarithm of the number of data items multiplied by the number of data items. 
This complexity is on a par with linear. The increase in time is reasonable for relatively small increases in the amount of data, but the impact on performance of very large data structures can be unacceptable. Examples of algorithms that display linear rhythmic complexity include the merge sort and the quick sort. Finally, with exponential complexity, the number of operations, and therefore the time taken by a program, grows in proportion to some constant raised to the power of the number of items in the data structure. This means that if the constant is 2, the program takes twice as long when asked to work with only one extra unit of data. If the constant is 10, then one extra item of data can slow it down 10 times. Needless to say, this is very poor scalability. An algorithm with exponential complexity can become intolerably slow almost immediately. That's not to say that programs that scale with exponential complexity are useless. If you're happy with the way a program performs when it's given a certain amount of data, then you'll probably be happy with its performance on another occasion when it's given the same amount of data again, or for that matter, when it's given less data. Scalability just might not be an issue for you. A classic example is a program to solve the n queens problem. For example, can you place four queens on a 4x4 four four chessboard so that no two can take each other? Now what about eight queens on an 8x8 chessboard? Other examples include some implementations of the travelling salesman problem, or a password cracking program that operates by brute force. So remember, big O complexity is not about the raw performance of a program, it's about how well a program scales. It's about how well a program maintains its performance when given more data to work with.